Hello, digital educator, and welcome to this here session that is a part of our continued essentials of tech infused instruction series. And we're talking today about tech literacy versus tech fluency. It is a not very long topic to talk about, but it's a super important topic that needs to be in the back of everyone's minds as they start going down this path of tech infused instruction. So before we can adequately explain what it means to get to tech fluency versus tech literacy, let's think about juggling balls. You start off with one ball inside of your hand. And if you wanna to toss this up and down, that's pretty easy to do. And we can keep that ball in the air pretty easily. But now you enter a second ball. Things get a little bit more difficult because you're having to focus upon two things and knowing what to do with two of these. And now imagine adding a third ball in and having to keep that third ball in the air. Incrementally with each number of balls that you add into the mix that you're trying to keep up in the air and keep moving, the task becomes that incrementally more difficult. We're juggling all of these different things because we're spreading our attention over the course of all of these different objects. So when it comes to technology and the use of apps and services, we have to seek this just right amount of apps that we should be using. That baby bear that's right in the middle the, the amount that is going to meet our needs of our curricula, while at the same point meet the needs of our students in knowing how to use the tools. I want you to think about your cell phone, this right here. Everyone on their cell phone has an app that has your text messaging on it, that right over there. You've used this app over and over and over again. This is one of those apps that you've probably used the most out of any app that you've ever owned. It's gotten out to the point that you've used it so many times, you've received so many thousands, if not thousands, if not millions of text messages, that you don't even think about how to operate your text messages app. This is in spite of all the, the Netflix, the YouTube, the, the Facebook, the Sudoku apps that are on your phone that have spread your attention to different areas. But the very nature of a text message app is that it comes back to you very frequently and you have to use it. And so you get those repetitions in and you become very, very good at it. Now that you're really good and experienced through the use of your messaging app, you don't even think about it. Whereas if you go to pick up a new app that you have to learn how to use, you struggle. It feels weird. It's not familiar. You can't do everything that you usually can do. Whereas you go to the back to the, the good old SMS or the chat app and you have the ability to do whatever it is that you need to do to accomplish the task because of your superb familiarity with the product. So let's think about tech fluency versus tech literacy now from a scenario of going to a foreign country. Je parle un petit peu de français. But if I was to go into Quebec, and this happens quite a bit actually, I can speak a bit of French. I can read the signs that are on the roads. I can read the street signs. I can read enough for me to get around. But at the same point, when I attempt to go to speak to a person, my, my uh, very shallow French begin, begins to fall through. I have a number of words that I know. I have a number of phrases and inflections and manner of converse that I can do that it's small, uh, my literacy of French, but I can't speak in a manner that is effortless. Everything ha takes very much intentionality. My French is not to the point where it's fluent. I have French literacy, but I do not have French fluency. And as Clint Lalonde says from the EdTech Factotum, literacy is but a pause on the way to fluency. Now, I don't want you to think that tech literacy is only way to get to fluency. Yes, you have to have a literacy of apps, but sticking at literacy, broadening your literacy to so many apps that your knowledge base is wide, detracts from your ability to get to fluency, especially when it comes to pedagogy when it comes to kids having to learn a different tool every time you do a different lesson. The 
the cognitive load, the extraneous load that detracts away from your ability to learn new things is increased when we have to spend as much attention on how to use the tool as it is the content that we're trying to learn. So for this reason, we have to get to fluency, not to tech literacy. Tech fluency, not tech literacy. And the only way that we're going to arrive at tech fluency as opposed to tech literacy is we have to be very, very conscious about the number of apps, the number of services, the number of programs that we are introducing to kids. The least number that we can possibly use is the best number to use with kids. That way we're focusing upon the content and we're using the tools in order to get there, not focusing upon using tools just for the sake of using tools. And I would argue here that we need to use the tech that matters in that 90% of our tech usage can be accomplished and should be accomplished through the use of seven to 10 apps. I wrote a couple of years ago, a post saying, here are my top 10. And in fact, when it got down to it, it was hard to even get to 10. When I started thinking about what really truly mattered for the apps I'd use, you know, Flipgrid, uh, whatever LMS I'm going to be using, Padlet, Google Docs, Google Slides, or maybe just the whole G Suite as it stands. You should be able to do everything that you need to do inside of your class within seven to 10 apps. Now, let's take for instance, we could probably get seven to 10 apps when it comes to a, a digital formative assessment tool. You go with Google Forms, you could go with Quizzes, GameKit, Kahoot, Socrative. I mean, there's five right there. But why the need to have to use five different things? Yes, there are some that are better when it comes to teamwork or teams or uses of that or power ups. But the more that we spread our knowledge out or our kids knowledge and their cognitive load upon multiple apps, the least that they get repetitions on the ones that truly matter and gain true fluency where they don't even have to think about the app anymore. They don't have to think about the service. They just think about the content. So stick to those seven to 10 apps that you can do 90% of your curriculum. And that's when you're going to arrive at tech fluency.